everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic.com and we're here in Liverpool ahead of WrestleMania. And remember, I should mention as well that you can watch WrestleMania. It's available on BT Sport Box Office. And I'm joined by the one and only Seamus. How are you? <coughs> I'm great, mate. I'm mm. great, yeah. Just uh, enjoying Liverpool, enjoying... Um Getting back home for a couple of days, come back from Dublin, and now I'm excited about this game tonight, Liverpool against Let It Go Madrid. I was going to ask, what's it like being a Liverpool fan? I'm a Sunderland fan. It's awful at the moment. It must be nice seeing your team win quite a lot of the time. Yeah, a little <clears throat> spoiled, you know. Uh, even times during the during the last 30 years since we last won the league, it, we, you know, we've been spoiled with it. Like we won the Champions League here and there, and the UEFA Cup and stuff. But yeah, it's it's tough, you know. Like it's hard. It you know you. When I started following the club, they were winning everything. Mm -hmm. And then it was a, a period where we just, you know, up till now, haven't been able to win the league. So you are spoiled, but at the same time, you, you get used to that success and you get used to winning. So it's times are good right now. Has it always been in your family? Is that where you? Is that why you support Liverpool? <clears throat> no, my dad supports Leeds. Uh, my youngest sister supports Liverpool too, actually. And that, that was just on her own, on her own, um, her own decision. Uh, there was four Irish players, Whelan, uh, Houghton, Staunton and Aldridge who played for Liverpool and that's kind of like why I gravitated mm. towards them because Republic of Ireland, you know, being where I'm from, they were, it was Euro 88 and you know, that's where I started watching football. Fair enough. Um, I know that when you were in the League of Nations, uh, Rusev was a very, he was very open about being a big Real Madrid fan. Yes. And also I believe a Bulgarian team that escapes me right now, uh, FC, it began with a P but I can't quite remember what they were called. Um, oh my god, he got me a shirt from them as well. I can't remember what they are. <laughs> Can someone Google that, please? Rusev's favorite uh, Bulgarian team. <clears throat> Just chime uh, in when you've got it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still, I'm still getting home from the lack of sleep. Uh, but yeah, he follows Real Madrid, very, very like avid Madrid supporter, which apparently has angered uh, Stoichkov quite a lot <laughs> because uh, Stoichkov, obviously being the Bulgarian hero and like part of that '94 team, and now. Uh, <laughs> Rusev supports Real, which kind of baffled me a little bit in the beginning. But uh, I know that Re I know that uh, he wore a Real Madrid shirt to uh, a WB live event in Barcelona, mm -hmm. and Stoichkov like was losing his mind. I saw him at the during the Champions League, wearing typical dad clothes, pink shorts or salmon coloured shorts, and uh, probably a blue shirt. So again, like every da European da, no fashion sense whatsoever. <laughs> Um, now, I was going to ask, is there much of a footballing culture backstage at WWE? Probably more so, I guess, with the European. Yeah, more guys so now, instead. European. And, like, the, you know, we've got some people from down under as well. And, you know, there, there's a lot of appreciation for football. It's really taken off in the States in the last five to six years for non. non Europeans, you know what I mean? But, like, me, Cesaro, Rusev, uh, Drew, and. Um, you know, up to recent, Sakara was a massive Wolves fan as well. He goes to some of the games, um, but we're all like we're all big fans of all big fans of football. Um, now, <clears throat> I want to ask you as well uh, before we get into the questions about WrestleMania and everything. Are there any people backstage in WWE who you'd probably want to have on your five side team? Maybe a little bit handy with a football. You know, the Usos aren't bad. Kofi's mm. not bad, apart from Rusev Evans is already obvious and Drew. Um, we used to have a bit of kick about before every show. Uh, that stopped for a little bit because uh, I'd probably pick up again now in the summer. But uh, used to knock the ball around for it was a great warm up. Like I guess the ice hockey, some of the ice hockey teams do it as well over in the states because a lot of ice, a lot of players who play ice hockey in the NHL, a lot of them are from the Scandinavian countries right. who grow up playing football. So Kofi's handy. The Usos are pretty handy. Um, Luke Harper used to be another one who was pretty good. Uh, but yeah, there's a few few guys who you wouldn't think expect. Mm. Well, fair enough. Now, I did just mention there uh, the WWE locker room and whether there's much of a football culture. Now, has the general atmosphere of the locker room changed because you've obviously been in WWE for quite a few years now? Has it changed from when you were first there up until the present day? It definitely has changed. Mm. Um, it was a different atmosphere when I got there. Uh, I mean, it was always, it's always been great and all that, but I feel like, you know, you had Taker run the SmackDown locker room, uh, Hunter kind of like, Head of the raw locker room, or Cena actually Cena more more so the locker the raw locker room, they're not there anymore. I feel like now there's a vibe like there's a there's a lot of common sense within the within the within the guys there now. We all take care of it ourselves. Everybody chips in, and if anyone's uh you know just messing around too much or not messing around, but if just anyone's kind of out of order, everyone will just kind of jumps in together mm. and uh, lets them know what the story is. So it's kind of like a family kind of thing, but. I think everyone's got enough respect now that they don't need to be policed and 
you know, we're all adults, you know, we, we were all grown men and grown, on the other side of grown, grown women. So pretty much should know how to handle ourselves and take care of ourselves. In terms of, because just from since I've been working in uh, in the whole sport and everything, I've noticed that a lot of it is centered around passing down advice uh, from more experienced uh, athletes to the less experienced ones. Do you find yourself adopting that sort of leadership role, or are you more kind of a chilled backseat kind of guy? Uh, I'll, if I see something, I'll say something. Uh, sometimes egos are a little bit uh, a little bit testy, you know. Like when you go and tell somebody something, sometimes it'll be like it can be taken the wrong way. But if I see something that's blatantly obvious that like I feel strongly about or, or something that maybe th- that person doesn't know about they're doing in the ring, I'll, I'll say it. But uh, yeah, it's like it's we the, the locker room really is missing that sort of vibe. The, the taker when I was there, I, I was in there. Taker was giving me advice. Triple H, Sean Edge, um, Cena, you know, and worked with Randy a lot as well. So that's kind of missing a bit. You know, Randy obviously is still there, and is, is, to me, he's one of the greatest ever. Like, if you watch his stuff with Edge over the last couple of weeks, the it's it's on a different level. Like mm. the, the intensity and the character and the pauses, and it just draws people in. Edge too is phenomenal at that. Like that's why he's made the jump to acting so easily. I actually told I told Randy the other day. I was like, man, after seeing that stuff he did with uh, Beth, I was like, man, I said, mate, you need to be doing more, more films, man. You need to be out there, getting yourself out there, because. He's he's on another level. I found it very convincing because even though even though he's a bad guy, a lot of the time the more compelling stuff is when it's got just a grain of truth to it as well. And a lot of what he was saying kind of rang true quite a lot about uh, how Edge has had all these problems coming back from injury and everything. It really managed to, I think, be, come across very effectively. The greatest villain too, mate, is the one who thinks he's doing the right thing. Yeah. And that's that's the key. Like the guys who go out there pretending to be bad, I'm bad because I'm bad. There's no motivation behind what you're doing then there really is no substance to what you're saying or, or what you're portraying on TV. So in everything he's saying, the, the character believes it, you know, and it, that's why it rings true. And that's why, you know, re- wrestling is, it's entertainment, man. It's a TV show, it's drama. Like it's characters, there's characters going out there. It's like, there is definitely a separation between what happens in the ring and what happens in your home life and what happens away from the camera. And that's, that's really what, that's, that's, it's an art. Mm. Uh, now, Edge and Orton seem to be on a bit of a collision course for WrestleMania. We are fast approaching WrestleMania now. I wanted to ask you about your first memories of walking out at a stadium-sized WrestleMania show. Can you even comprehend like how many people that is? Uh, you can't comprehend it. You can't put it into words. You have to actually just experience it yourself. I came first exper- WrestleMania experience was 24 when I came out to help take the ring down. It was me and Drew, I think, after the... Uh, after the Undertaker Edge match, and just looking up at all the people, if the, this, the seats were still filled, uh, it was starting to like pan out, people were starting to like leave and stuff, but it was, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like mm. looking down and looking up, because we were up in the bleachers for the, for the show. Uh, we got, the, literally got the, I don't know, we got tickets as developmental talent, but <laughs> they were like, they were up there, mate. So we, uh, Getting down there and looking up is a completely different vibe. It was it's insane. And of course, WrestleMania 26, when I walked out there, and these got out, these got really, really weak. Just the, the noise hit me. I was like, oh my God, because I wasn't really thinking about it. I'm going out here, I was thinking more about the match, what I'm doing, what I'm going in there with Hunter, you know. This is like Hunter's, like, God, what was this? Like, eighth mania at the time, ninth, tenth mania. It's my first. I'm going in there, just don't mess up, you know, like, just go out there and to have fun, I was very, very focused. And then, but I just completely forgot about the crowd. So walking out there, I was like, the noise hit me. I was like, Jesus, I was like, whew. take a deep breath and let's go. Mm. Uh, you're also part of one of the, I guess, one of the more divisive WrestleMania moments in recent times, the uh, the lightning fast victory over Daniel Bryan mm. at WrestleMania 28, I believe. What are your memories of that day and your thoughts of that? That wasn't much to remember. <laughs> We're on first, <clears throat> walked out. He kissed AJ, broke his head off, one, two, three. I was world heavyweight champion. Yeah, I guess. It was that fast, man. It was that fast. And, you know, it was part of me at the time, like, felt like, man, we could have had an amazing WrestleMania match. A lot of me, too. And we created that moment, obviously. But, you know, we could have gone out there and and had an amazing match. But I always talk about the positives of things. Obviously, the positive for me is I became world heavyweight champion, one of the quickest ever. But we went into three, two out of three falls match the following month, 
and we we tore it down in Chicago. It was incredible, and we stole the show that night, mm. uh, and it was just just a phenomenal match, one of my favorite of all time. So everything is a story, you know. Some stories begin at WrestleMania, some stories finish at WrestleMania. So our story was it was catapulted by WrestleMania. Like we had all these. We had these stories and these segments and SmackDown and Raw uh, before WrestleMania to try and build it up. And it was it was all right. You know what I mean? It wasn't really catching fire. But the Mania thing just just lit a massive fire underneath it. And then we went on to to, uh, to Extreme Rules. And uh, we were like, we were the match everyone wanted to see. And we didn't disappoint. Um, also, just some thoughts of yours as well I want to get on, on a more recent WrestleMania memory. One featuring... Uh, some legends, basically, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels and Mick Foley, yourself yeah. with the League of Nations taking on uh, the New Day. Uh, was it quite surreal? I guess you've already shared the yeah, ring with certain lot, legends. There was a lot but... of troubles with the group. You know, there, there was four guys who were, who were awesome, like really, really good individuals. And then we got put together. And the idea was, you know, because um, Vincent wants to get Roman going. Uh, and Roman had hit like, you know, there was kind of like that stigma. And I've been there before, too, where it's like, oh, he's being pushed. The machine is pushing them. Let's not like let's you know let's go against the grain and 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 you know, kind of two fingers up kind of thing like that. So we were brought in and I'd already I think I'd taken the title off Roman already and I was doing these promos. And then they put all of us together and the first the second the first match we had on which is we were together on Monday SmackDown on the Tuesday we he beat all four of us in the handicap match and it was just downhill from there and it was just like it was frustrating because. You know, a lot of us, we kind of did clash a bit in that, you know, like there was just, everyone was just so frustrated the way we were going, you know, um, that, you know, there was a lot of, I guess there was a lot of egos in the group too that just, just clashed with each other because we weren't happy where we were. Like we're just better as, in, we're better, as individuals, we were way stronger than we were in a team, but it just happens, you know. But the, again, the whole point of that entire group, there's a reason behind everything that WWE does and the reason behind it, the League of Nations group. It wasn't to build the League of Nations. It was to uh, it was to push Roman, to get Roman, get Roman going. I must say, just finally, that I'm quite surprised to hear that because um, it seemed to me from a, a viewer's perspective that you guys were having a great time, so it was quite a close bond between you as friends. Yeah, we made the most of it. Mm. Like, no, this is not going to be wrong. We were friends. All of us were friends. Like, I'm still pretty close with uh, Rusev, like one of my best mates. Um, I talked to uh, I talked to Wade as well and, now and again, you might say the Rio might pop around, whatever, like uh, pop up somewhere, whatever. But uh, it's been a while with him; I haven't seen him in a long time. But I know they're trying to wrap us up here. But um, but yeah, it was. It was just kind of frustrating because, like, you know, we knew we could do a lot. We could dominate the WWE, but that wasn't that wasn't the purpose of the group. The purpose of the group was to to, to help Rome get Rome to the next level, and that's what it was. When you're in that bubble and you're looking at it, you're kind of going like. You know, oh, you get you kind of get a little bit like frustrated, man. Like you got four guys here who can do so much, but there's a method to everything that is done. And when you take a step back and you look back at it, like that was the goal was not to make League of Nations this this group that would destroy everybody. The 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 the, the goal was to put the odds against Roman. Fair enough. And that's that brought him to WrestleMania. So that's that's really what it is. Fair enough. Well, thank you very much, Seamus, for joining us here on Coldaholic. And remember, once again, you can see WrestleMania on BT Sport Box Office. Any final words? Yeah, WrestleMania 36, Tampa, Florida. Don't miss it, fella.